Hello, this is, I'm going to run a brief tutorial today on how to write on your computer a floppy disk that your Ensonics sampler will read. That is, we're going to create an instrument, put it on to a floppy disk, and that any of your Ensonic samplers will read, from the Ensonic EPS Classic to the 16 to the ASR. Either way, it'll work. So we're going to need a bunch of things to do it. This is sort of a, a process, but once you get it set up, it really only takes five minutes. So the first thing you're going to need is a old computer. I'm using a Dell Omniflex or Optiplex GX620. Why you need this old computer is you need right here this built-in tower floppy drive. It won't work with a USB floppy drive. You need one of these old ones. And also, I think a lot of the programs we're using, we're using work best with Windows XP. That's what I'm running. And that's just a general note. The things that I'm doing, they work for me. And I don't necessarily know what's going on all the time, but they work for me and they should work for you. There will be some redundancies. This is kind of cargo cult and sonic tips. But if you follow what I'm saying, it should work. So you're going to need an old PC. Um, best place to get those is on eBay. You can look around, but Jesus, just save yourself some time and spend 50 bucks and get one. Um, so we also need the, the floppy disk. Then we're going to need two computer programs. The first we're going to need is Translator. And Translator is this uh, program manufactured by uh, Chicken Systems. You can get it on their website. Uh, it's kind of hard to use at first, but we're going to be using it for very simple stuff. The other program you're going to need is something called EPS Lin. And that's a very funky but great and elegant little program that runs from your command prompt. You should Google EPS Lin and Sonic and you'll find it. Now you're going to have to download that program as well as a disk utility program. I suggest you download that or else nothing will work. That's going to write the floppy disk. Because these old floppies, um, Ensonic uses a proprietary format and it'll just be a mess. It won't work unless you get this disk utility. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is so you've got your waves somewhere. I've got some waves in here. I'm going to be working with this one called Transilla 4. So first I'm going to open up Translator, which I already have. Translator is a little tricky. It has some, has like a pretty good help file, but still it's tough. So my wave is in here. You see that Transello 4, click on it. You can hear it. There's other, there's ways to make kind of layers and instruments in Translator. I'm not gonna be covering that. This is just simple stuff. So what you do is you highlight it, push translate, and you're going to go to Ansonic ASR. Now this is going to make an EFA file, which is an ASR10 file. And uh, one of the things you'll want to do when you set it up is the options and there are destination locations and that will set the destination of where the translated file will go. See right now I really don't, not really entirely sure where this file has gone. It's somewhere on here. I'm not that worried. There it is. Went back to the same folder. So once you've done that, <clears throat> you're going to take this file and then you're going to put it in the folder that contains uh, the Epsilon program. So do that. Put it in there. Okay. Once you've done that, then you're going to open up Epsilon. And this is where a lot of trouble starts. You're going to have to open it up. I've already got it open because it's a process. You're going to have to go to the command prompt, which is basically DOS, the old school thing that you might have, may have learned on in the 80s and early 90s. One way you open the command prompt is, Jesus, I don't remember, window C or something. Anyways, look it up. You'll figure it out. And what I suggest you do is, um, you know, open up something that kind of gives you a refresher on some of the DOS commands. So it's a, a bit tricky to open up this program in DOS, but once you do it, it's not that hard. And Epsilon has 
pretty thorough, if hard to parse, uh, manual which gives you all the, the, the commands that you'll need to use the program well. We're going to be doing very simple stuff with it. So the first thing we'll want to do once we've got this program opened, so it'll look like this. I suggest putting it somewhere simple like on your desktop. So we need to format the disk. Yowza. Me a lot of downtime in this video. So the way you format the disk is once you've got the program opened, so you just type in epsilon dash format E. Oh, whoops. This operation will destroy everything in the target medium. Fine, yes. And then it does ha has this pretty cool kind of light show that it runs on you while it's formatting. And while that's happening, why don't we just, well, we can look at this. It should look like that. And then outside, it's a pretty day. Nothing really doing too much in my neighborhood. It's early morning. Back to this cool looking thing. I'm telling you, it's thrilling once you figure out a little bit of DOS. It's, it's it gives you that, fur, that old thrill that you had when you opened up a program. You feel like you've accomplished something when you do it right. So anyways, this, this uh, procedure I'm using, I didn't invent this. This was uh, conceived of, or I, I was taught by the great Robin from the Nederlanders. And uh, I, I can never pronounce his last name, but this guy, he, Robin, helped me and guided me through this. So I owe everything to Robin. So it's almost done here. Writing system block. Okay, so now we've got a formatted disk. Now the next thing we'll need to do is make an EPS disk image. So that's just another command. And again, all these commands can be find in like found in the help file for Epsilon. So I'm going to type in Epsilon space F I space E P S disk dot IMG space EPS boom. I don't think that worked. Oh yeah, look, there's a problem. Here I'm gonna do that again. It's hard to, to film and type at the same time. So bear with me. F I E oh, EPS disk dot I N G dot Oh, see how many problems creep in? I'm so close. EPS. This operation will destroy everything in the target medium. Fine. All right, we've destroyed everything in the target medium. Now we're ready to write our file. So, if your file is in that folder with this program, again, this should be fairly simple. EPS space dash P1. I have no idea what this means. And now we have to write the name of the file. Look at this. This keyboard is old and junky. Epsilon P. And now we have to write the name of the file, which I'm kind of blanking on, to be honest. It was... Is it Transillo 4? Yeah, why not? Four. And that's dot EFA. Writing. Boom! See that? We've got it now. Now, because this is such a cool old stable program, you can just take out the disk. and load it up into our boom now one thing to note 
because this is an ASR file, it's treated it as a sample file, as a as a stereo file. So once it's in, this will get cooler. Anyways, once it's in, go to amp, and you'll notice that the pan is all the way either to the left. So you'll just have to set this down to zero. Now it's in the middle. And you're ready to go. I hope this hasn't been too confusing. Please don't ask me too many questions in the comments. I don't know the answers.